Revenge Films It had been three months since I first started dating my girlfriend, Karen. I'm close to 30 myself, so if I was going to be in a relationship, it was under the pretense of marrying in the end. Neither of us are as young as we once were, and it was about time to start thinking about putting down roots. We got to talking about stuff, and we eventually decided to pay her parents a visit. I had heard about her strict father who showered his daughter in unconditional love, so I was quite nervous on the day I'd meet him. I entered her parents' home and greeted them with a politeness professionals could only dream of. But then her father, his eyes aflame with fury, pretty much sprinted towards me with murderous intent as he shouted, How dare you soil my lovely daughter, you bastard! And as I saw a clenched fist hurtling towards me, my body was met with an impact that sent me flying. I hit my head hard on a protruding corner of the wall. I was bleeding quite a bit from my nose. The blow to my head rendered me shifting in and out of consciousness. My vision was blurry, my ears were ringing, and my entire body felt numb. Did he just punch me? What on earth did I do already? It was so sudden that it took me a while to fully process what had actually happened. Karen, as she kneeled to take care of me, said, Are you okay? I could hear the words, but I said to myself that if I stayed here any longer, I really could get killed. Another blow like that would surely do it. In a daze, I stumbled out of the house. I was completely somewhere else after that. I don't even know how I drove home, climbed up the three flights of stairs, and got the key into the door lock. What I did know is that the brand new business shirt I had bought for the occasion had become a fragment of a Gorefest movie. It had blotches of my blood everywhere, and the whole thing was stained red. Karen contacted me when I got home. I'm so sorry. That must have been so painful. You looked like you were going to die, honey. But Dad said he would now forgive you for ever getting involved with me, his only daughter. Wonderful news. Eh? The hell do you mean, wonderful news? I'm still dying, goddammit! I got even more confused as I couldn't understand what she meant by that. Thanks to her father hitting me and my head striking a corner of the wall, I genuinely thought I'd gone crazy in this throbbing noggin of mine. My whole face bloodstained, my consciousness on the precipice of oblivion, and suffering a concussion. What in the world was good about that? I was surprised too, a little, but you're with me under the pretense of marrying me, so this really can't be helped. Huh? What are you talking about? What do you mean, can't be helped? The bastard freaking punched me without any warning! Sorry, but I'm filing an offense report. What? 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 I mean, obviously. You saw what your father did to me not three feet away from the scene of the crime. It's your reward for claiming me. His daughter is yours. He would rather die a painful death and burn a thousand years in hell than let a man take his daughter away from him without getting something in return. You can't blame him. That's just bullshit. He may be your father, but we're both members of society. It's not the Dark Ages. And who, with the right knowledge of the world, would suddenly punch someone hard enough to send them hurtling a couple feet before colliding with something dangerous? Something inside my mouth's been cut, and the spot where I'd hit my head was swelling, sending waves of pain all around. And yet, not a single sign of apology from the man who induced this? I honestly became frightened of Karen for saying that this is only natural. Her father was pretty much a drug gang leader and nothing else at this point, and I wasn't going to live with that. Hey, what do you mean by that? You're joking, right? That you'll file an offense? This is daddy we're talking about, you know? I matter to him. That's why he did it. Any father would do the same for their daughter, I'm sure. You do realize that if the conditions were just right, I could have died, right? Even now, my face is covered with blood. My head hurts like hell. I'm going to the hospital and get a diagnosis certificate. He hit me so suddenly without any goddamn warning. So no one has any right to complain about getting the police involved. Of course, I'm breaking up with you. My life will always be in danger as long as I'm affiliated with that bastard. And you're my biggest connection. Honey, what are you talking about? Stop speaking nonsense. On the day we went to greet them, no less. 
I was always legit, all right? I thought I would politely greet your father and get his blessing to continue being with you under the pretense of marrying you. Sure, I knew you told me about it, and I assumed it would be a very tense situation to pop the question before getting his answer. But who destroyed that dream by inducing violence? That very same father! Instead of thinking over my offer in silence, his spite towards me nearly thinking about marrying you nearly made me meet my doom much too early. And FYI, I'm not settling this outside the courtroom. I don't need to be brought. I intend to make you and your freaking family pay the legal price. So be prepared. You can't do this. What? That stupid injury is nothing. It'll go away soon if you sleep on it. As I listened to her talk, I became ashamed of myself for thinking that this was the girl I intended to marry. She clearly didn't care for my well-being, and she was willing to take her violent father's side, even when I did nothing wrong and never retaliated against him. If you sue, what would become of Daddy's reputation? Unlike you with your cheap wages, he's successful with his work. He's an important figure. What if you ruined everything with these stupid rumors? He would lose all of his money, and then I would lose so much money too. True, her father did work at a large, famous company, and I think I remember him being equivalent to department manager, maybe. But who gives a goddamn crap about that? No matter how successful you may be, Never apologizing after leaving a person bloody and broken is proof that your humanity is gone and that you don't deserve to be successful or free. But those stupid rumors won't have an ounce of lies, will they? Your father suddenly beat me to the ground when I came to greet him, befriend him, and hopefully leave later on with his genuine blessing to be with you. Every grain in that is the truth. But that's the test. All he did was test you so you could truly make this goddess you're talking to yours forever. How can you not understand this? Frickin' bullshit! I was beaten. I almost died. And you call that a test? Karen went on to nag on the phone, but the pain was becoming more excruciating. And I apparently lost consciousness. The next day, I went to the hospital to get a detailed examination just in case. And then the doctor told me, You were very fortunate, sir. A couple inches more, and you could have been seriously injured. I felt a chill run down my spine. My own father hit me a few times in the past, but I was still a child at the time. And there was always a sound reason of me doing something naughty. When I dropped a plate by accident, he wouldn't. But when I threw a plate at the wall in front of him, he would. Simple. Plus, those weren't full-force KO punches like what you'd find in a classic Street Fighter arcade game. Her father beating me was nothing but a surprise ambush. I was not at fault, and I never had a chance to defend myself. It wasn't like I'd gotten Karen pregnant, and it wasn't like she admitted she was unhappy in the relationship. I only acted as any gentleman would do when he met his girlfriend's parents if he wished to continue the relationship to marry her later. Plus, I wanted to make her feel special. So I never broke her curfew, nor did she spend any nights away from the house, nor did I break any other rules of her family's. Just to be clear, she still lived with her family, so I thought it was natural to respect her family's regulations. And yet, despite my best efforts, here we are. As I said I would, I later went on to send the details of the incident to his office in order to sue Karen's father. After a while, a hysterical Karen yelled into my ear from her phone. Daddy was fired from his job thanks to you. I told you so many times not to do this. What have you got to say for yourself? That I never said I wouldn't do it. And after getting tested at the hospital, doctors told me I was only a couple inches away from serious injury. How dare you still think there's no problem? You're alive and well, so yeah. That's what freaking counts. As time went on, talking with Karen, I felt myself growing to hate her and becoming ever colder towards her. I was going to break up with her in any case, so hating her wasn't a burden for me. But enduring through the outbursts of dark, negative energy that all people hold inside themselves is mentally exhausting, I found. Hurry up and retract your summons to court. And go to Daddy, get on your knees, and say you're sorry. Do as I say, or you'll regret it. No! You'll regret it if you don't apologize. I'll say this again. All I did was invoke what I'm entitled to do after going through this incident. 
You have no say in what I can and cannot do! Urgh. Burn in hell, you freaking bastard! I never paid any heed to her insult and hung up. She had worse language than an offensive redneck who had a bottle too many. Because of the man's success, Karen's family was living in a splendid apartment, but later on, they struggled to pay the rent. Additionally, news has a funny way of getting around because someone leaked details. And soon thereafter, all of their neighbors were saying stuff like, The husband of that family, he brutally beat his daughter's boyfriend, almost killing the poor soul, you know. What? You're kidding! And he had a nice job, too. Oh, yeah. His job fired him because of his being found guilty of assault. You know what they say, being human is a given, but keeping our humanity is a choice. He chose wrong, I declare. The rumors left them unable to go out much, and with their tails between their legs, ran away to a small apartment somewhere downtown. Him being fired from his job wouldn't be too great for him in the end either. I couldn't forgive him for beating me. But what really drove me to get the law involved was the indifference that they showed after the ferocious act. If Karen had acted differently, or if her father had sincerely apologized, the results would have been different maybe. And I did break up with Karen family's unnatural side until after we were married, the great festivities that would ensue afterwards still make my spine tremble. As a parting note, although my swollen face and throbbing head were a nuisance sometimes, I was able to get my old life back. It appears that that man is looking for another job, but with what happened, let's just say it's going poorly, and every day is a challenge. Karen is also working nowadays, but it's still part-time, and I can see hard times awaiting her in the future, but I feel absolutely no pity for her. But I don't feel hate either. I've completely lost my interest in that stupid family, and I know I'm a good person that doesn't dwell on the past. I look to the future with determination. My name is Bob Brown. This is a story from when I was in ninth grade. First of all, to set the scene, I have to say that my father was a very hardcore military maniac. And because of that, I was also interested in these things too. When I was small, my dad and I would do these weird games. For example, when we would play torpedo plane, my dad would pretend his hand was a torpedo plane. So to fight it off, I would have to shoot it down with an anti-aircraft machine gun. As I grew older, I knew this whole game was really stupid, but when I didn't play along with him, Dad would pull his super sad face. And I thought to myself, he was like a little kid and played along with him. One day, I had to go on a short trip for my club's away match. So my dad came over to send me off. As usual, he raised his hand in salute. It was kind of embarrassing for me to see him do that in front of everyone, but I also didn't want him to look all sad, so I saluted back and went on the bus. But then on the bus, the topic was the dude who was saluting. Whose dad is that? That's your dad, isn't it, Bob? My close friend called out to me. The whole grade kind of knew that I was military nerd, so... <laughs> your dad's pretty funny. Props to you for playing along with your dad. That's cool. I was glad my clubmates weren't weirded out by him. Because we were chatting happily like this on the bus, we were able to ease our nervousness before our match. We also did well in the tournament, so everyone said, Maybe it was thanks to your dad's salute? Hey, let's invite him to our matches or something. I felt happy and grateful for my dad. We soon ended our sports trip and returned back to our school. But I wasn't able to spot my parents who were supposed to pick me up. As I went around to look for them, Jacob, my best friend at the time, and his mom came over to me. She said to me, Welcome back, Bob. You must be tired. Come over to our place and let's have dinner together. Uh, thank you, ma'am, but I just came back, so maybe next time? Both Jacob and I were pretty tired from our matches, so I politely declined her offer, but... Come on. Just come over to our place for tonight, understood? She was smiling, but her words sounded strong. What? Um, that's... I was very confused, but she grabbed my hand and pushed me into her car. Hey! Mom, what are you doing? Can't you see he's tired? 
let him go home. Jacob tried to cover for me, but she snapped. Just stay quiet. I was able to catch her expression in the rearview mirror, but she looked like she was running away from something. She also seemed strange as we drove on. She would meet other moms from my grade and say hi, and drive down streets she was clearly not used to. Okay, I'll turn right here, and I'll drive straight through this road. She took the longer route on purpose. Honestly, I was drained at this point. Why is she taking all these long routes? Just want to get home and relax. I thought to myself, but it was true that she obviously looked different as she drove. So I decided to keep quiet, but it seemed that Jacob still had no idea what was going on. Like, Mom, what are you doing? Bob's super tired, just wants to go home. Let's stop this already. As he cried out, his mom replied. But it was not what I was expecting. If you get out of the car now, you'll get killed, she said. What? what? Both Jacob and I were shocked by her words. It didn't seem like she was joking around. Because I've known her for a long time, I knew she wasn't the type to say those kind of jokes. Even after we arrived at Jacob's place, his mom looked around the house, checking if everything was all right. Once she decided the coast was clear, Come in quickly. And I entered Jacob's house. I was still confused as hell. I had no idea what was going on. And I just followed her instructions and went inside the house to sit down for a second. Jacob and I started eating the food that was served, but what she said earlier was stuck like a thorn, and I didn't have an appetite. I couldn't eat at all. It seemed like that was the case for Jacob as well. Hey, Mom, what did you mean by what you said back there? Breaking through the heavy atmosphere, Jacob tried asking his mom, but the moment he said that, the phone suddenly rang. It really surprised me. The phone call was from my mom, and soon after that, Jacob's mom drove me back home. My parents were waiting for me in front of our house doors, and they told her their thanks. We need to help each other in times like this, she replied, and went back home. It's only a 10 minute walk to Jacob's place, and we've been running back and forth to our home since we were in kindergarten. Adding to the mystery was my parents' attitude, and I tried asking them what was going on, but all they gave me was an evasive response. I went to bed early that day, and the next morning, when I saw my parents acting very normally, I just shrugged it off and didn't ask them what happened. Two months passed and my parents called me over to have a chat. I was able to hear what really happened that day. After hearing the true story, I got shivers down my spine. Apparently, on the day of that away match, Kevin's mom, he's in the same grade, different class, coincidentally passed by and saw my dad and I saluting. To think that a military family is in this school. Unbelievable. Before their war is a mindset takes over our children, the school should take responsibility and expel. Despite it being a public school. This kid. She expressed her concerns to the school and went around looking for parents that agree with her. The school and the parents around her tried to calm her down and convince her that it wasn't like that. However, Kevin's mom vowed to kick me and my family out of my school. She spread rumors around the whole school. And soon the story reached my classmates and their parents to Jacob's mom, and finally to my parents. My parents were aware that Kevin's mom knew their faces, so that's why they didn't come over to pick me up. Jacob's mom drove me home in their stead. And to make sure Kevin's mom didn't approach me to say stuff, she took longer routes and had other classmates' moms wait around the neighborhood to make sure Kevin's mom wasn't around. I was finally able to understand why Jacob's mom was acting so strangely that day. A month after the away match, I kept seeing my classmates' parents on the route to school almost every day. Now I know that was because they wanted to check Kevin's mom didn't show up to assault me or something like that. Jacob also stayed behind to head home with me too. In the end, Kevin didn't seem to remember what my face looked like, so... I can't let my child stay in a school filled with militarists. She demanded and convinced her husband to move out of town about two months later. I thought, now that's exaggerating at first, but apparently Kevin's mom was planning to catch me off guard after school, physically hurt me, and make me unable to go to school. Ropes and whatnots were found in Kevin's mom's car. There were rumors that she was trying to kidnap me. I mean, on days that I was heading home in the evening, I would see Kevin's mom on the street sometimes. 
but I think she wasn't able to do anything because I was always walking with someone else. Hammond's mom's plan gradually shifted from, let's get him expelled, to, I can just make Bob physically difficult to go to school. When I realized that, I was genuinely terrified. If it weren't for the local classmates' families and them taking turns to watch over me, I might have been in some serious danger. After hearing the whole story, I realized how many people were involved just to protect me. I could understand my own parents trying to protect me at all costs. But other parents were also taking turns watching over me every day. Jacob also came around to say, Let's go home together. It's dangerous to walk alone, bro. In hindsight, I think its parents told him to say that to me. A few years later, I heard from a friend that Kevin's parents got divorced. Because they moved quite far, Kevin's dad had to travel much farther to get to his workplace. He got tired from all the rush hour fatigue. And he proposed a plan to maybe live separately for a while. Then Kevin agreed to that plan, said he wanted to stay with his dad. The mom wasn't happy, and it led to her beating Kevin which then led to the police coming around and that was it for the family. Obviously, it was all Kevin's mom's fault because of her irrational behavior. She was hated by both her son and her husband. And in the end, Kevin and his dad went over to his grandparents' place for a while. Honestly, Kevin never said or did anything to me. And he's also a victim in this case. I almost felt bad for him. If his mom didn't say anything crazy, we would have still been in the same school, so... She said all that stuff about me and my dad, but ended up wrecking her own family. <laughs> how ironic. I think she deserves it, though. Hi, my name is Kelly. I'm just an ordinary woman, much like you see every day. Two years ago, I divorced my husband, Zach, and now I'm single. I'm focusing hard on my job nowadays, enough to call my work my true love. One day, an unknown woman contacted me, wondering who could it be. It was none other than the woman whom my ex-husband cheated on me. It's been a while. Do you remember me? Yes, I do. But I admit, I really don't want to. Two years ago, I discovered Zack had been unfaithful with this woman, which led me to ditching him. The divorce itself went smoothly, but afterwards, she and I had a slew of arguments over the settlement of damages. Fortunately, I was able to get the sum I would initially wanted. But those times were truly draining. Why would she contact me now, long after everything was settled? It seemed she wanted to meet and talk, so I invited her over to my place. How is he? Not that I really care. I broke up with that bastard. I see. Well, unfaithfulness does often yield results like this. The relationship they had seemed superficial from the beginning. And he never had good taste in women. But this made me wonder even more. Why the heck does she want to talk to me? Perhaps something happened while I was settling everything with Zack? I was pondering a few possibilities when Florence, the woman in front of me, said something like, I can't take it anymore with your stupid harassment. Excuse me? I had no idea what she was talking about. What was she trying to say here? Harassment? I don't have the time to do that at all. Also, ever since Zack and I split up, I haven't kept in touch with him or with his woman. Convinced she was mistaken about something, I asked her a few questions. Um, are you sure you're not mistaken, madam? I'm not mistaken, I say. I'm tormented by mental insecurities, and it's all your fault. I listened completely in the dark. She stated her ridiculous excuses which said that her life had become difficult because of the demands for compensation and the settling of fear because of my shouting and accusing during the divorce mediations. All of this was complete nonsense. I never shouted or insulted her, of course. And I remember her mother putting herself between me and her daughter, scolding her severely. Furthermore, she also claimed that the reason her most recent boyfriend dumped her was because of my harassment. Wait now, how could that possibly be? You do realize I haven't spoken to you even once during the last two years. You told my boyfriend directly, didn't you? You told him I'd stolen your husband from you. That's why he dumped me. That's outrageous. Not to mention I hadn't the slightest idea of who her most recent boyfriend even was. 
this woman went so far as to tell me she was going to sue. However, even if she did, what she claims would never give her a winning chance. Any conventional lawyer would decline to support her upon hearing this fiction. I listened to her half-heartedly and occasionally answered in single words. <sighs> she finally went home, jeez. Honestly, these nonsensical accusations were getting on my nerves. I have more important things to think about. However, a few days later, I was contacted by a gentleman who claimed to be a lawyer. Good afternoon. Is this the correct phone number for a Miss Kelly Collins? Indeed, it is. This lawyer started to explain about the woman wanting to sue me. I never thought that a lawyer would such bullshit seriously. So I first listened to everything he had to say. He stated it was difficult to explain in detail over the phone. So I went to the nearby coffee shop where I met this so-called lawyer. She is willing to keep quiet about this matter if you're willing to pay her demands in full. How much is that woman demanding? 30,000. 30,000? I didn't recollect any instances of harassing her, nor did she ever provide any solid proof against me. I never did anything to her, and I refused paying her demands. And this lawyer said that it would be settled in a court. In the event this will be taken to court, she will have a big advantage. I personally must recommend the alternative. Now even he was talking their languages of morons. Of course, I couldn't understand how such a court without any proof whatsoever could even be an option. And even if things did proceed, I told him I would not attend, simply because I just don't have the time. I can't waste any time out of my busy life doing meaningless stuff like this. I'm afraid the remaining option is compulsory execution. Eh? Compulsory execution? Even when I'm not even in debt? In the event the sums and damages aren't paid, and the attendance to court is refused, this is the standard course of action. You don't seem to know much of the law, so I can't blame you for not knowing about this. Upon hearing those words, I'd had it up to my head. Compulsory execution? Court? All right then, let's do just that, shall we? If you're willing to fight, I'm willing to give it my all as well. But there is something I'd like to clear up first, and that would be... So, you're a lawyer, right? Yes, I am. Then why haven't you given me a card yet? Forgive me. I'm currently short a business card. Oh, I see. Well then, here's my own card. I'm sorry? As I said so, I extended my hand and handed over the so-called lawyer my card. I'm a lawyer, if you hadn't noticed. Are you all right, sir? A, a lawyer? He stared at the card with a look of bewilderment. I guess the possibility of me being a lawyer never crossed his mind. But rather, did that woman actually forget I'm a lawyer too? Or maybe I just never told her? I knew professionally that what this gentleman was saying wasn't coherent at all. I almost burst out laughing a couple times. I mean, he really did say those things to a real lawyer after all. About the court case, when will I receive my summons? Oh, um... By the way, where's your lawyer's badge? I had forgotten to put it on. Upon finding out that I was a real lawyer, the tables had turned. Perhaps he knew he was in trouble. I noticed the beads of sweat trickling down his forehead. I had the faintest idea, but I now knew for certain this gentleman was no lawyer. I now believe he was hired by that idiot woman to intimidate me into doing what she wished. I guess my first impression wasn't too good considering she'd used this blockhead of a decoy to get me. Are you... really a lawyer? I am. You must call my firm to double check, if you please. I'd also like to know where your firm is, so please give me its phone number. Uh, that would be... Impossible. For the simple reason that he isn't a lawyer. There is no conceivable way he works in a law firm. Huh? How about you confess already? That deranged woman hired you, didn't she? Or do you really want to consider settling this in court? I give up. I'm sorry. You must not go about claiming you're a lawyer when you're not. Of course. He confessed in the end. Turns out he was just a friend of that woman. He appeared the most respectable, and so she chose him for the job. 
The situation was, after she broke up with Zack, she started going out with another guy, but that guy later dumped her. And at around the same time, a notice to pay compensation to me had arrived at her doorstep. She then teamed up with this man in front of me to civic money from me. I'm warning you, but this is grounds for fraud. If I sue you, you will quickly find yourself in jail, I'm afraid. Please! I beg you! Forgive me! The guy, pale as a slice of mozzarella, offered his sincerest apologies. He probably realized he was a total goner. Uh, well, his attempt was unsuccessful in any case, so we never reported him to the police. But this was a true crime, and I demanded some extra to settle the situation once and for all. Although it was unsuccessful, they did thoroughly attempt to succeed in this escapade. So this is the obvious way of things. When I demanded 1,000 from each party, the guy remained reasonable. But that Florence wasn't so easily coerced. Why do I have to pay you for more damages when I was the victim here? She'd say in a tantrum. So I only sued her. Why am I being sued here? It seems she never truly understood what she did wrong. An unsuccessful attempt, I remind you. But she was arrested nevertheless, and went behind bars. What's worse, after she was released, she attempted scamming yet again. She attempted marriage fraud to run off with a large sum, but was eventually caught and went back to jail. Talk about one who never learns. Finally, I can focus on my work. Later on, I married my newest boyfriend, and now, I even have a child. I did really well as a lawyer too, as I now run my own law firm. I am now at the pinnacle of happiness surrounded by a loving husband and child. I had been dating my boyfriend for a few years now, and we began talking about marriage. Getting married meant having a relationship with each other's families too. We talked about each other's families, and that is when I found out that he had a little sister. His sister was still young and in elementary school. They were not related by blood, though, because his mother had remarried and his sister was the daughter of his mother's second husband. I loved kids, so I was keen on meeting his sister. I asked him to introduce us when I visited his house. A week later, I went to his house for the first time. My boyfriend lived in a very big house with a big yard. As I entered his home, I was greeted by his mother. Welcome. Please make yourself at home. Thank you so much. It's lovely to meet you. I'm gonna fix us some drinks, so can you go up to my room upstairs? Okay. As I made my way up the stairs, I wondered if his little sister was around. I then saw his little sister in the backyard. As I peered out the window, my boyfriend pointed in the direction of his room. My room is this way. I saw your little sister through the window. Can I go say hi to her? You don't need to do that. She's a little crazy, so best that you don't get to know her. What do you mean? She's the trash of this family. Trash? I couldn't believe the words coming out of my boyfriend's mouth. Why would he refer to his little sister as trash? Even if they were not related by blood, it was cruel to refer to a family member in that way. That day, I wasn't able to meet his little sister. I spent the day relaxing in my boyfriend's room, and then went straight home afterward. But I was worried about his little sister. I asked my boyfriend to take me to his house once again. We decided that I would go to his house over the weekend. That weekend, I arrived a little early to my boyfriend's house. I wondered if I should ring the doorbell or not. Then I heard shouting noises from inside the house. I could hear my boyfriend and his mother were yelling. This food isn't meant for you. Stop eating it. Please, I'm really hungry. I haven't eaten anything in two days. You shouldn't be stealing food from our fridge. You're not a beggar. If you ask nicely, we may be able to spare you something. Please give me something to eat, I beg you. Why would we do that? You're not even real family to us. I couldn't understand why my boyfriend and his mother were so horrible to this little girl. I was deeply shocked after overhearing their conversation. Oh, are they bullying that poor little girl today too? I feel so bad for her. This is not the first time. 
No, it's not. Sarah's stepmother and stepbrother are always so mean to her. Sarah's father doesn't know this because he lives somewhere else due to his work. They don't feed her properly or let her inside the house. Sarah lives by herself in the shed in the backyard. I was appalled by what this woman had told me. So Sarah was not being fed and she was forced to live in a shed? This was outrageous! Sarah's father gets paid well for what he does. So his stepson has a fancy car and his mother had a lot of high-end fashion accessories. Sarah wears rags and she doesn't even get to bathe. Her friends tease her at school because she smells funny and wears dirty clothes. Sarah's all alone and in despair. I can't believe this. I ran over to the shed in the backyard of my boyfriend's house. My boyfriend saw me and said, Why did you come straight to our backyard without ringing the doorbell? I came to see Sarah. Why are you so fixated on getting to know Sarah? You don't need to meet her. She's not worth it. Of course I'd want to meet her. I heard what you and your mother were saying to her earlier, and your neighbor told me all the terrible things that you do to her. Don't you realize that you're abusing your little sister? She's not my real sister. You're a real asshole, you know. And I went into the shed. Inside the shed was an old table and a dirty blanket. Sarah was sitting on the floor, thin and tired and looking. Are you Sarah? Please don't come here. I want to help you, Sarah. Let's leave this terrible place together. My mother and brother will hit me if I leave without their permission. I won't let them do that to you. Let's go. What are you doing? This is unforgivable. I don't care what you say to me. I'm warning you. Arrest him. My boyfriend tried to use violence against me, but several police officers stopped him. Did you call the police on me? Of course I did. I knew that I needed their help with this. Shit, shit, shit. Meanwhile, my brother's mother was being arrested too. What are you doing? Let go of me. You bitch! I would have married if you hadn't gone against me! I couldn't help but slap my boyfriend in the face after what he just said to me. I'm glad that I didn't make the biggest mistake of my life by marrying you. My boyfriend and his mother were taken to the police station. Sarah, I'm going to make sure that they don't hurt you anymore. You don't need to worry. Let's ask your father to come back right away. But my father has to work. The police officers told me that they would be calling your father to tell him what happened to you. Really? Yes, really. I told the police officers everything that I had heard from the neighbor and had them call Sarah's father. As soon as Sarah's father found out about what was happening, he hopped onto a plane and came home that day. I stayed with Sarah until her father came home. I brought her home with me after we spoke to the police officers at the police station. Sarah, are you all right? Daddy! Sarah cried tears of relief as soon as she saw her father. Sarah's father had been given the details on how Sarah had been mistreated by his wife and stepson and apologized to his daughter over and over again. Are you engaged to my stepson? Thank you so much for saving my daughter. One of your neighbors told me about what was happening to Sarah and I'm no longer engaged to your stepson. I couldn't marry someone that abused Sarah like that. And I want nothing to do with Sarah's stepmother either. I'm sorry to openly criticize your family like this. No, you're absolutely right. I used to have my parents look after Sarah when I was away from work. But I thought that me getting remarried would be a positive thing for Sarah. I had hoped that having a new mother would make Sarah happy. But I was too naive. I'm so ashamed of my decision. I'm getting divorced from my wife. And I won't forgive her or her son for what they did to my daughter. Sarah's father thanked me profusely and left my house with Sarah. Soon after, my ex-boyfriend and her mother were charged for abusing Sarah. They were each sent to separate prisons. The last time that I saw my ex-boyfriend, he was cursing me for getting him into trouble. I told him that it was his responsibility to pay for his crimes. I hope that he rots in jail for what he did to poor Sarah. It was all his fault. Sarah's father was furious with his ex-wife, too, and was happy to see her go to jail. 
After the two of them were arrested, Sarah's father got in touch with me. I met him and Sarah at a cafe. I'm moving to a new place with Sarah, and we're going to start a new life there. That sounds like a good plan. Sarah's much happier now that she was living with her father. Sarah, I hope that you have a great time at your new place. Make a lot of new friends, okay? I will. Thank you. Because of what my ex-boyfriend did to Sarah, I no longer had a boyfriend and had no plans to get married anytime soon. I started receiving alimony payments from my ex for all the trouble that he caused me. Most of all, I'm happy that I was able to help Sarah before it was too late. I hope that she makes up for the tough times by making lots of new and beautiful memories. Hi, my name's Samara. I work in an office. There aren't many of us employed in this enterprise, but it is fulfilling work and we enjoy it lots. The company isn't successful enough to have expanded much, but the CEO was very busy going on frequent business trips across the country. One day, Miss Knuckle, said to be the CEO's cousin, joined us in the enterprise. The CEO himself had left me in charge for a while. Until Bobby comes back, I'm at the top and my word holds highest priority. Understand? Although the real CEO is a kind of man with a big heart, for some reason, Miss Knuckle gave off the opposite vibes. And I have no idea why, but I seem to have caught her attention. Hey you, could you do this? Uh, I have something important to finish first. Eh? You trying to argue with what I say? No, madam. Then do as you're told. Oh, and let me remind you, work past 5 o'clock won't be paid. We have to cut costs, you see. Yes. I mean, I get that costs have to be cut, sure. But I just can't do all this work by tomorrow. It can't be helped, so I often brought my work home and toiled my butt off. Upon hearing this, Miss Knuckle would say, What's this? You can't finish your work in time? And bring it home with you? How pathetic of you! Her demeaning was harsh, to say the least. And she's like this with me, so when I went to talk to some colleagues... She mentioned she didn't approve of me because you're attractive, Samara. Someone said that because you have the kind of face that can bend your guys head over heels. She's dogpiling your work to keep your flirting from happening. What the hell is that? I'm not doing anything like that. Of course everyone knows that, but because she's the substitute CEO, she'd go hysterical if someone opposed her. I guess that's true, but I don't like this feeling like it's my fault everyone's having a hard time. The next time she presses more work onto you, come to us in secret, yeah? We'll divide up the work so that she doesn't notice. If she does, she might do something even worse to you, so... Okay, thank you. In this matter, my colleagues helped me out for a while, and as we predicted, her harassment became much more intense. Hey, you there! The document hasn't been done properly! What? But I didn't finish it, miss! What? It's been deleted? I double-checked! And the data of the stuff I'd finished had been completely wiped! Deleted? I don't think you ever did the work in the first place, hmm? You mustn't lie to me again, you hear me? I'm not lying, madame. You'll see once I refresh the data. We have a meeting with them in a few. There's no way you'll make it in time. This is your responsibility. N no You will get deduction in pay for three months. Why does she do this to me and only me? Even later on, she would think of ridiculous ways to blame me for a mistake that someone else made. And my mistakes had become so frequent that my colleagues couldn't even cover me any longer. And then finally, your mistake cost us a valuable contract with one of our clients. You're responsible for this disaster. But responsible But you reassigned this particular work to yourself instead of me, madam. Eh? Pushing responsibility onto other people again, are we? You're such a maggot, you know that? You throw your work onto employees' shoulders because you can't do it properly on your own. But that's... Nevertheless, you clearly stated what you did, madam. Prove it then. Did you record it? Did anyone else witness our little chat? No. 
Miss Knuckle told me after everyone else had gone home, leaving me alone with an unbelievable amount of work without pay. By the way, but the notion that she was perhaps planning this whole thing made me so frustrated. In any case, I now know too much. You know we don't need employees who can't do their job properly. And make too many mistakes. You're fired. F fired This has gone too far, madam. Samara here has dedicated so much of her time and effort into this enterprise and has contributed to its growth, especially when Mr. Patrick isn't here. Indeed! Mr. Patrick pulled so many strings to get Miss Samara to transfer him for another company, you know. You're annoying, the lot of you. The CEO has left me in charge while he was away, by the way. You mean to tell me that you don't know what substitute CEO means? Everyone fell silent after those words. It's all right. I'm so sorry, everyone. Samara, no! Yeah, yeah. All the teary-eyed goodbyes is but a nuisance and an obstacle to get work done. So be sure to take all your professional furnishings, too, all right? Of course. In this manner, I gathered my immediate belongings, signed a resignation notice, and left the company. But a few days later, Miss Knuckle contacted me directly. Listen here! What's the meaning of this? What's this about? Oh, what's this about, my ass? Much of the company's furniture and accommodations have gone when I arrived here this morning. Plus, no one else is coming. I asked the cleaning lady, and she said that you told everyone to take it all away. Stealing the company's property. I'm reporting you to the police, you know. What are you talking about? You told me to take all of my personal furnishings when I left, did you not? How does that relate to this? My parents run a second-hand store, and with Mr. Patrick's company still getting up and running, we were lending those to you. Commodities with no charge, you see. So every computer, desk, and printer were all provided by my parents. But since I was fired, I took my belongings with me. You're kidding, right? The company will surely go on its side in no time. Bring them back. I can't do that, madam. Those free commodities were a token of thanks from my parents for taking care of me, their daughter. Hang on, where are all the employees? Uh, I believe everyone went on strike. They all contacted Mr. Patrick and told him they wouldn't work under the control of the likes of you, Miss Knuckle. I think he's coming back very soon too. What? Please tell me you're joking. I'm not. How about you explain everything to him on behalf of me and my colleagues? Oh, what should I do? To tell the truth, my colleagues did contact Mr. Patrick, but the part about going on strike was a lie. With Dad's help, we merely moved all the furniture to another floor on the building, and that's where everyone's working. Honestly, there's no way we deliberately abandon work, but... It was also true that the real CEO came back and was furious over the fact that she'd fired me behind his back. And then the kind man presented himself at our place. We need your skill in our company, Miss Samara. Please come back to us. He was actually on his knees. In any case, I didn't leave my job. According to Mr. Patrick, his mother and Miss Knuckle are sisters. Miss Knuckles would boast to her parents about her business skills in bringing multiple companies back from the dead, and they convinced Mr. Patrick's parents to take on their daughter, Han, in their son's own company. And Mr. Patrick was on board under the pretext. Miss Knuckle herself apparently had the intention of privatizing the whole company and then taking over it. But no way a woman who couldn't handle my simple work could take on the position of CEO. No, sir. Additionally, we found out that Miss Knuckles was selling off the company's commodities, and the shop that accepted the sales were none other than my parents. And the footage of her stopping by the shop were not rare. Of course, her parents were informed of this and... Are you actually trying to make Bobby's company your own money bags toys to play with? And you stole from them! Needless to say, they were disappointed in her. And Mr. Patrick... What's all this about firing Miss Samara behind my back? That young lady and everyone else here are worth a hundred times more than you. Do not make decisions without my knowing about it. And about the thefts, we'll report you to the police. She was quickly 
quickly evicted from the enterprise and later arrested. Additionally, because of her harassment towards me and for blaming me for multiple contracts allotments, demands for damages had also been made, it seems. Of course, Mr. Patrick later went on to see those clients personally and begged them to reconsider the contracts, all of which were a success, by the way. After getting arrested, perhaps because she attempted to make his company her own, Mr. Patrick demanded compensation too. Why do you make me suffer so? I'm a relative of yours. Why? Good riddance. Holy moly. A company is not a toy. I found out one day that my idiot husband was cheating on me. One of my neighbors said to me, I saw Sarah and your husband at a hotel together. At first I thought she was mistaken, but I wanted to check for myself. I went through my husband's phone and looked for any clues about his affair. And I found the evidence that I was looking for. My husband didn't expect that I would look at his phone, so he kept it unlocked. I found lovey-dovey messages between him and his lover, Sarah. My husband and I each had our own credit cards which were linked to my bank account. I decided to check my husband's credit card statements online. It showed numerous visits to hotels where he was having his clandestine affair with Sarah. What my neighbor had told me was true. It was the first time that I found out about my husband cheating on me, and I was greatly shocked. My husband's lover Sarah lived in our neighborhood, and she was famous for her beauty, which attracted many men. I wasn't sure why a beautiful woman such as Sarah would want to have an affair with my husband. It made me angry that Sarah acted completely normal around me, as if nothing had changed. Before confronting my husband, I decided to have a word with Sarah. I know that you're having an affair with my husband. Oh, I didn't expect you to find out about us so quickly. She felt no remorse for what she was doing to me. In fact, she looked down on me. You're not satisfying your husband's needs, so I am. He's so into me, <laughs> he won't leave me alone. How can you not see how wrong you are? You're having an affair with my husband. Of course I know that I'm having an affair with your husband. I seduced him because I wanted him to leave you and marry me. He is intent on leaving you for me, so why don't you let him go? It's pathetic of you to stay with him when he doesn't love you anymore. And she had the audacity to laugh. I was furious and ashamed at the same time for being laughed at, so I hung up on her. That evening, I asked my husband about his affair, and he didn't even deny it. I'm in love with Sarah, and I want to marry her. I'm leaving you. My husband hadn't told me that he loves me for many years. And now he was confessing his love for Sarah to me. I was dismayed. I was mortified against my will. Ended up saying, Fine, we'll get divorced, but don't ask me for anything else. My husband nodded in agreement. Sarah was delighted by the news of our divorce and messaged me. Thank you for leaving him for me. I promise to make him so happy. I was livid. But I didn't expect their marriage to last. I left the home that I had once shared with my ex-husband and moved into a new furnished apartment. Since my new place was far away from where Sarah lived, I was happy that I wouldn't run into her anymore. Six months after my divorce, Sarah got in touch with me. How are you? Why would you contact me after stealing my husband from me? It's not my fault that he chose me over you. We're married now, in case you didn't know. <laughs> I'm a rich housewife. Uh, how does that make you rich? Well, he earns about $300,000 a year. And he also owns a lot of high-end items. Oh, 
He wears a really nice watch. <laughs> That's the only reason I stole him from you. I'm only with him for his money. Sarah was in a great mood. She loved bragging to me about her new life. Sarah was fooled by the expensive stuff my ex-husband wore. She didn't know that he had bought those things with my money. I had no interest in buying extravagant things with my hard-earned money. I think you've misunderstood. He doesn't earn that much. His annual salary is around $20,000. He's not even an employee. Uh, what are you saying? How could he afford all those lavish items then? <laughs> it's not like he borrowed the money from the bank. I'm certain that he can't afford those things with his pay. The $300,000 income he was talking about was our household income when we were still married. <laughs> that can't be true. How come you're making more money than him? That's not possible. I started my own company with the inheritance that my parents left me. I have income from my company as well as my personal investments. My ex-husband bought all those expensive items with his credit card, which was linked to my bank account. Since he was my husband, I didn't mind that he bought things with my money. So that means that he's not rich? Yes, that's right. He used to have his own business too, but it failed. He still has debts from when his business went awry. I helped him with some of the debt payments, but then I realized that he was using that money to go shopping and not pay back his debts, so I stopped assisting him after that. You're lying. He never told me that he was in debt. I'm not. He received some of our shared assets when we got divorced, but he will need to use all of it to pay back his debts. He won't have anything left after that. Plus, he had to pay me consolation money for cheating on me up with you. By the way, you haven't paid me any money for the mental suffering that you caused when you stole my husband from me. I'm sure my lawyer got in touch with you about that. I, I don't know anything about that. Well, please check. You bragged about the affair to my face. You can't get away with not paying for the damages. I got a hold of the messages that you sent to my husband while you two were having an affair. I'm not going to pay you that money. You should have told me about it before going behind my back. I, I'm going to sue you for keeping me in the dark. How is this my fault? <laughs> I'm not obligated to discuss my personal finances with my husband's lover. Even if you don't agree to pay for the damages, I can have the court order you to pay anyway. Uh, th th this can't be happening. I was supposed to become a rich housewife instead of being ordered to pay money and my husband is in debt? After finding out the truth about her husband, Sarah lashed out. You deceived me. You're not rich at all. I want a divorce. Then she handed the divorce papers to her husband. But her husband had no intention of leaving her. He was completely smitten. Everything blew up in Sarah's face. But I didn't care. It had nothing to do with me anymore. Of course, they had no choice but to pay me consolation money. Sarah imagined a life of luxury when she married her husband. But he turned out to be penniless. They are now living together in a small apartment and paying back their debts. My ex-husband, too, was having time adjusting to his new life. He couldn't stop spending money, although he didn't have any, and he kept on accumulating debt. Loan sharks would visit their apartment requesting them to pay back the money that they had borrowed. Eventually, they had so much debt and couldn't pay back the money, so they went on the run. They both got what they deserved in the end. As for me, I got rid of the husband who spent all my hard-earned money and lived in a spacious and comfortable apartment on my own. My name is Emma, just a normal housewife. I live with my husband and my child, and I would say we lead a simple yet happy life. My child is in elementary school now, and I'm suddenly busy with all the school events and my job. I have a couple of mom friends now, and things were going well. Except for this one person in the group. Oh, Emma, I heard your little group is going out for some tea next week. 
It's this lady here, Miss Banks. She's infamous for showing up to group lunches or dinners and never paying for what she ate. She would always say she forgot her wallet or doesn't have enough money on her and makes the other mom friends pay for her. On top of that, Miss Banks, she eats like a queen. Because of her, we were troubled with these extra expenses we didn't plan for. I wasn't the only one who was troubled by her. The rest of the mom friends in our group was baffled by her actions. Even just the other day, I don't know where she got this news from, but a family crashed into my family's barbecue outing. They ate a bunch like it was their own barbecue gathering and left without cleaning up. Where did you hear this? I heard your group talking the other day just by accident. You're going to that famous steak place, right? I'll be joining all of you. What? I had no idea where she heard all this from. I mean, we have planned this very secretly because we didn't want to invite her in the first place. By this point, I was getting really tired and annoyed at her, so I decided to be honest with her this time. I'm really sorry to say this, but could you refrain from joining our dinners this time? Oh, why? We've already told the restaurants how many people will be showing up. Oh, it's fine. We can call them and let them know it's just one person. No, that's not the case. She kept trying to convince me that it's okay for her to join. So I told her we're honestly troubled by her actions. I told her that we won't go and eat out with someone who never pays for their meals. And also how the attitude to think someone will pay for their stead is very rude. However, she just laughed at me and retorted, That's not true. I just happen to not have enough money. Or I just happen to not have my wallet on me. It was a coincidence that it just happened to be those times. Well, that's been the case every time. Does that really happen? Plus, you never pay us back. Huh? Is that so? It's true. Everyone's sick and tired already. Plus, you even came barging into my family barbecue and just went off devouring our food. Oh, that was a pure coincidence, she said. But would you bring over your hungry child and husband to a campsite purely by accident? I wanted that barbecue to be special time for my family, so I bought some expensive barbecue meat. But over half of them was eaten by Miss Banks and her family. And I know it was on purpose, because she began eating from the most expensive meat and went down the list. I don't know what to call her. Lowly? Impudent? I'm just genuinely surprised that a person can do such a thing with a straight face, and you left without cleaning up or anything. Well, it was your equipment after all. I thought it would be bad if I touched it without your permission. Well, you shouldn't show up and devour someone's barbecue meal without permission. Oh, is that so? She replied, evading the topic. Doesn't she feel even guilty? I don't want to eat out with this person ever again. So I ended the conversation with a harsher tone. Well, if you'll excuse me then. I said that and left the scene. I was sure things would turn out fine, and then came the day of the dinner. Then, 10 or so minutes before my mom friends and I headed to the restaurant, I received a call from Miss Banks. I had a bad feeling about it, but I firmly told her off the other day, so I thought there wouldn't be any problems. Thinking to myself, I picked up the phone. Hello, what's the matter? Oh, Emma? Sorry to start without you. We're already eating now, so hurry up and come on over, okay? What? Miss Banks had arrived at the restaurant before us and started eating. I asked her what was going on. You only said please refrain. You never said I can't. Uh, no, you just shouldn't do that. What are you talking about? There's no need for me to refrain by doing anything. Well, that's not something you choose for yourself. I never thought she would lack this much common sense. I heard other voices from across the line, so I assumed she had brought her family along. How ugly can she get? As many thoughts and questions were buzzing through my mind, Miss Banks hung up the phone. Why does she always do things that bother or bring trouble to people? I was really angry. I couldn't stand it anymore, and I needed to say something to her personally. I explained the situation to the mom friends that were there with me, and we went into the steak restaurant. However, I couldn't see Miss Banks anywhere inside of the restaurant. Huh? She said she arrived before us. 
as we stayed there confused, I received another call. Gosh, how long are you gonna keep us waiting? We're stuffed! Um, are you sure you went to the right place? We just arrived. Huh? You're at the main shop in Brooklyn, right? What? We're at the shop down in Texas. As I listened to Miss Banks, it seemed like she thought we would be at the restaurant in Brooklyn. Actually, this dinner get-together was a part of a little group vacation. I thought Miss Banks knew about this trip and planned to crash in during our dinner time, but I guess she just overheard half of our conversation. Appreciating this chance, I left Miss Banks on the phone, letting her wail and complain all she wanted to, and happily glanced over at the menu with my friends. Y you should have told me! You're the one who invited me in the first place! I never invited you in the first place. I don't have to tell the details of our trip to people who haven't been invited, right? She continued to ramble on and say incomprehensible things. If I don't show up, she won't be able to pay. Do something! Don't you feel bad for my children? And so on and so forth. She's the one who tried to join us without our permission. And it's on her that she made the mistake of going to the wrong restaurant. Hey, can't you really come over here? It's impossible. Think of the distance between us. It's a four-hour flight. And there's none left for tonight. No way! We've already eaten a thousand dollars worth of food. I don't have money on me. Do something, she wailed out loud. But it's honestly none of our business. Oh, so you really weren't planning to pay? That's karma for you. No, don't say that. Help me. Why should I help you? We never invited you in the first place, but you still decided to forcefully join us. And also, make a mistake by showing up to the wrong venue. It's obvious that I had done nothing wrong. I mean, she made us pay for her all the time, so I can't bring up a better word than karma. I guess you'll just have to use your card, or borrow money from a friend or something. Do what you can. Well, we'll be eating now, then. Hey, wait, no, wait up! I didn't let her respond to that, and swiftly hung up the phone. We then proceeded to order the steaks we've been looking forward to this whole time. It was so nice to think we can finally relax and genuinely enjoy our meal. My phone continued to ring throughout the evening, but I ignored them all. In the end, since the calls were so annoying, I just turned my phone off to focus on my dinner. I updated my friends on the situation, and they both said it was karma too. Later on, I returned home from my trip. I was informed of the shocking truth. Miss Banks got arrested for leaving the restaurant without paying. The rumor goes, Miss Banks and her husband tried to tiptoe their way out of the restaurant, leaving their children behind, and got caught by the restaurant staff. My mom friends and I decided to make her pay us back too. We had a lawyer join our negotiations and properly ask Miss Banks to pay back the amount she made us pay for all this time. However, when I told that to her, she fake cried and said, Hard to be friends! Why are you doing this to me? You should be helping me out! With a smile on my face, I replied, Well, I don't think a person who always forces you to pay isn't a friend. Then, Miss Criminal, if you'll excuse me. As for her child, the Children's Welfare Center came in to help, and it seems he's going to have to live far away from his parents now. I feel bad for the child, seeing his parents get arrested right in front of his eyes. But honestly, I don't think it could be helped this time around. Since then, I never see Miss Banks around anymore, and I'm able to have a peaceful life, because there's no need to worry about paying for someone else. We started eating out at fancier places too. As for the Banks couple, because they had to pay for all the damages done, they attempted to scam the elderly and got arrested. Again. Because this was their first time getting caught, they were put into probation. They got arrested during that period, so I guess they'll end up in jail a little longer now. Miss Banks' older sister is taking care of the child now, and I heard he's doing well. Miss Banks, though, she's been receiving a lot of backlash, and her parents and relatives had cut ties with her, so she's all alone now. She's not doing very well with her husband, too, and I heard they might divorce soon. How was today's video? If you enjoyed it, please subscribe, like, and leave a comment. Stay tuned for more.